<clears throat> those are the animation principles. It's basically the... Um... Okay, so let's... Let's continue. So you, so you put an asymmetry on the forehead, um, on the eyebrows. You didn't add exaggeration. You didn't pretty much take it far on the eyebrows. Um, the distance between the eyebrows and the eyes. So basically, this is just this is incorrect. Um, and if you look at the mouth, the mouth is yeah. It's supposed to be open, but. Uh... Yeah, the, the mouth has a... Um, it just like shows the teeth. So... Yeah, essentially... So this is a this is a lot um, a better attempt at your facial pose. Um, already you did a nice asymmetry. It's gonna be same row uh, far right. Same row right here. Uh, no one on top. This one? Yeah. Great. <coughs> so so same thing. Uh, his eyes are much more squashed here, and this one's a little bit. A higher, so you want to make sure to do the same thing. Uh, right now, the size of the eyes are pretty similar here, so just uh, definitely just keep true to um, this exaggeration. Uh, so, it's, so this pose is a little bit interesting, where his left eye, his um, if you look at his um, screen left of his eye, it's, it's kind of in a squash state, right, and his right side of the mouth is larger and is basically uh, squashing his, his cheeks at the, in the middle. So it's kind of meeting in the middle, uh, making the eyes small, the mouth is a little bit um, part of the open, the other side is uh, smaller uh, while creating a bit more of a stretch up here in, the, in his uh, left cheek. Um, so again, just push it and just create uh, create a shape, create an angle, and, and, and play with how extreme you can go. Um, so instead of just, just doing, posing the face for the sake of posing, uh, apply animation principles, like see how far you can, uh, in that example, in this example, his uh, eyebrow is here, and then his other eyebrows is way up here, right? And his and his eyes are uh, in, like like this shape. So just so see if you can push it as far as you can you can with this uh, setup. You can clearly see. You can clearly draw a line right on the eyebrows, and that's the easier to tell. And you want to make sure to keep your eyebrows sort of flowing in that same same arc, if you will. You don't want to shape it in a, in a way that you can't really draw a nice um, arc through through the eyebrows. So if you look at this eyebrows here, you can actually just kind of draw a nice line. Even though it's much higher, the way it's shaped, it flows into the other eyebrow. So um, who could tell me about, so this is revisiting squash and stretch again at a, at a more uh, like intermediate uh, or higher advanced level. Um, so one of the interesting things about squash and stretch is um, its energy. So if you look at squash and stretch as energy, that's kind of a neat um, thought, right? So how does it, so how does
does it apply to you guys? Um, if you want something to be, if you want something to um, have a bit more energy in your scene, let's say you're doing a, like a take, or let's say you're doing a jump. Um, so this is the leg. So this is a person's leg, a, a person's body, and this is the person's leg. And what is he doing? He's doing a, he's doing a squash before, uh, before the jump, right? So this is the act of creating, what? Squash. Creating squash for, for energy, right? So does that make sense? So if I want more energy, what, what would I do with this? Squash. You add more squash. It's a simple concept, but if you look at it as energy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you guys out in terms of polishing, in terms of uh, dialing in how much energy do you want. Instead of saying, oh, do I, how much squash do I want? It's like, how much energy do you want? You know what I mean? So in, in this case, I'll just do a quick uh, demonstration. So if, if the body's this way, feet this way, so he has a lot more, he's building a lot more energy to jump higher, right? So that, it's, it's something that's pretty straightforward, and it's understood, but now that we're using squash as energy, it kind of, uh, now you have a little bit more of um, a metrics or, or a gauge to work with. So whenever you're, so whenever you're posing, um, going from one, one pose to the other, and you're like, you know what, this feels a little, um, this feels a little weak. This is lacking a little energy. Uh, where can I add squash? Where can I add um, a bit more contrast to create energy? So, so that's, uh, once, you, once you start thinking that way, now you're using animation principles at an at a intermediate or an advanced level. Does that make sense? So, so now, uh, not only animation principles applies to animation 101 as a beginner, now you're taking animation principles to a new level where now it becomes much more granular, now it becomes much more sophisticated, even though it's still simple. It's pretty, it's pretty profound, like once you really um, use the principles at, at the highest level. <coughs> All right, so. So which one, which one is this? Uh, it's gonna be uh, next row, uh, second one. This one, right? On the on the top. This one, yeah. So this one, his mouth is smaller, his jaws are more stretched, um, and you haven't uh, put that together. His eyes are a little wonky too. Uh, one eye is is wide open. The other one is um, kind of cutting through his uh, lids, and it's not that way here. So so you didn't do you, you didn't do it accurately. So, so as you can see, like I'm just kind of going down uh, the list of, you know, how many things that you didn't um, take into account, how many things that you uh, couldn't observe because you, you know, you're just kind of starting to observe now, right? Yeah. So the more more you start observing, then you're like, oh, I didn't know this, I didn't know this moves, or I should be, um, you know, I should have careful attention to this part. It's the same thing as a uh, body motion. Um, you just have to just kind of really kind of hunker down and really see what's going on at the, the subtleties, the anatomical level, and things of that nature. And you always want to see the relationships. So it's, uh, the relationship is like, say, how far is the eyebrows from my eyelid? Uh, how far is this from that? Like, you want to, how far, you know, is the eye pupils from how, how deeply is my eyeballs cutting in through my, my, my skull? How much can I see that? 
can I see half my eye, uh, eyeballs or, you know, can I even do that? Like, how far can I bring my eye down before, how much white can I see? Like, you, you have to start, uh, start measuring and seeing the relationship um, within your own face. Just look in the mirror. So there's a lot of uh, discoveries to be had uh, because no one can just say, you, you have to start kind of getting into that routine. No one can just say, hey, read a book and then you'll just know these things. Even I, I, I told you guys animation principles from day, day one, and most of you guys still don't use that as a checklist because um, it, that's just the way it is, right? You have to be constantly looking for it, constant, constantly using it um, in order for you to, um, you know, basically be kind of be, be part of you. So it still takes a long time. So just kind of in the same, the same vein, just keep on looking for the details, uh, seeing the relationships, and seeing why uh, certain things move the way it does. And just be, you know, just be, uh, just be curious. And then, and that's a good first step into um, learning this, uh, learning anything, really. So let's go into, I think we have, I think that's it. Okay, so let's move on to the next person. Oh, do you have any questions? Uh, no. All right. Um, <coughs> I think that's I think that's a good job. That's exactly what what this assignment was for to get used to uh, the first step of observing face, observing your own photographs, uh, getting used to the rig, what you can do, and what you can't do, and I think you did an excellent job. So you're gonna show you're gonna post it on Discord or are you gonna show it? Uh, how are you gonna share? I don't, I, to be honest, I don't wanna show. I don't wanna post it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah. Anyway. yeah, yeah. Then, then well, you really can show now just to see the look. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll just I'll just see it once. I mean, it will be uh, unless you have it on your phone, and I can just kind of. Oh. But but things like no one can see it. So that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll just see you see oh, it once. I I don't stop. I want anyone to see me making faces. So, do you them to like, uh... <sighs> yeah. I don't want to tell my story I'll for storytelling class. I don't follow the, like, the or Copyrighted it. Or but I don't want to stir. Or show. like something like this. So this pose is saying you use like that. So I don't. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, I'll you can see in the yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it's not, um, okay, so let me, give me a second, sorry, Um, with this much, um, yeah, it'll be good to see the reference, but with this much uh, uh, push up this way, oh. I think the cheek could be Flat? a bit more uh, puffier at the top. Yeah, but you are so hard to make it puffy. So when I try to move, all the things move together. So. so 
So sometimes you just need to um, start. Let me see if we can. These are secondary controls here, and you have to verify how much. I mean, can your skin really do this? I mean, uh, you want to just make sure that you're not yeah. over exaggerating. Yeah. And sometimes you want to go, you want to exaggerate, you want to go far, but if you go past a certain point, it might be, uh, you might be a little too, uh, you might be breaking the human anatomy. But, but this is all right. So I think uh, overall, I think this is a, a great exercise. I think you guys are getting comfortable with the rig. Yeah, this is a really this is really good shape for your uh, eyebrows. So this is what I'm uh, talking about as far as uh, making sure the eyebrows following a nice arc. And I think they did a really good job here. And I think where it gets a little creepy is, is, is this. Yeah. I think you, you pushed it a little too much. Yeah, I know. So if you just look at the eyes, it's uh, it's it's nice. It's like you know, it's like having a, but then the, and it's a little too. I know. Yeah. Too, but yeah, that's fine. You can you know see how far you can push the rake, uh, but then you want to kind of bring that. Back. Bring that back down a little bit. Well, this is great. <laughs> and, uh, that looks right. like my brother-in-law. Yeah, I think I think the pose could, could have been uh, a bit more. Uh, the chin could have been out here. Something like something could have. So he's kind of looking up at the. He's kind of daydreaming. Right now he's uh, kind of looking down. <laughs> Uh, but you know, just uh, but but the purpose of this is for you to um, kind of get have fun and get used to this. Yeah, he's doing great. So you so this is the start of like a good um, so the line of action here, and you chose. So if your eyebrows are up this way, it's kind of like um, th th think of your flesh as like you know for this as like a flour sack or a jello. Yeah. So if your if your eyebrows are really high, then you might want to make this eye slightly larger than this eye. Oh, okay. So it's, like it's kind of it's everything is stretching and squashing, right? It's like kind of like yeah. this bag of <clears throat> flesh meat. Yeah, I should have done that. And and also, so you already have asymmetry here. You want to find um, find a way to add asymmetry uh, down the mouth as well. <clears throat> so one of the I don't know what's a good place to show this is uh, break your observe your face into uh, two two major parts uh, the upper face and the lower face. So the upper face is is your is your eye, and then the lower face is your your jaws and, and your lips. So if you if you divide this into basically two parts, so this is the lower, and and this is the let's say let's call this the eye mask, right? So if you Look at this as two regions. Now you have um, kind of a nice little separate territory that you can um, observe. Say, okay, what is the eye mask doing? Can I can I squish the eye mask? What is the lower um, uh, the lower face doing in relation to the eye mask? So you kind of look at it as two regions. So that way you have a nice little dividing dividing point. You can uh, opposed to seeing being overwhelmed by the face. Uh, there's a lot going on. So. Sometimes you just want to just look at the eyes. Just look at the eye mask, just the eye area. Then you want to look at the lower area and say, if you, look at the, if you look at the cheeks and the mouth, and if the jaws move up and down, 
Uh, what is that? That's basically kind of a squishy ball, right? It's almost like a flour sack. It's kind of a... Um, so, so if you look at your cheeks and your lower area as this um, kind of a flour sack type uh, environment from, uh, from the animation principles, squash and stretch, then you can start thinking, thinking the lower uh, part of your head is like, oh, am I adding enough squash and stretch in my lower, lower head? If I'm, am I adding enough squash and stretch to my, to my eyes, to my eyebrows? Is my eyebrows um, offsetted and working together with my eyes? So you kind of start separating these things and, uh, and looking at your uh, body parts as, um, as basically at, in the, uh, the fundam using fundamentals of animations, uh, you'll get a lot of... Um, yeah, it'll it'll start making more sense to you, and it'll simplify things for you uh, for you as well because it's everything is familiar to you. You you know squash and stretch, you know line of action, <clears throat> you know as asymmetry. So now you're telling yourself, um, should I did I add enough um, squash and stretch on this area? Did I add enough asymmetry in this part of the body and the part of the face? Did I add enough exaggeration on my jaws? Like, is there enough stretch there? So. So you, now you're starting to add the same thing that you already know to the face. And that's it. It's, it's really, uh, but it's, the face especially, um, you can break it very easily. If you, go, if you go too far, then it just becomes unrealistic or it just becomes kind of creepy. Um, or it just becomes so anatomically impossible that, um, you know, you want to actually use, the, use a reference to make sure that you're in line with the, um, what the human can do. Yeah. Um, so it's a, you're, you're running a fine line. I think I showed you the graph before. You can, um, you know, there's a sweet spot. If you go to the sweet spot and exaggerate it, that, that's fantastic. But if you go beyond that, you're going to break the anatomy. Mm -hmm. You're doing it poorly. Or if you do it too subtly, it just becomes unnoticeable and it's not strong enough, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to um, hit that exaggeration bar while keeping anatomy and... Um, and the relationships. So, uh, so, so, what did you think? Did you uh, did you enjoy um, doing this? Was it fun for you, or was it difficult? It was like I, I thought it could be easy. So I thought it's one thing that I want to talk about. But it, it took like two three days. Really, really, I had to think about pose, matching pose, and the facial rhythm was not easy. Okay, that, that, that's good. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts now. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. You got a full body, now you have another full body on the face. Yeah. There's so many controls and so many, uh, everything's new to you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Is it like like this? Does animator or just? Oh well, basically they take they uh, they take um, a video of a person's face, and sometimes they put uh, points around the face, and they'll take that um, data when they're moving, when they're talking, and then they'll uh, pu push it through a software, yeah, yeah. and then from the software it'll generate information of move and apply it to a rig like this. And th there's a whole uh, science behind it, and there's a whole uh, tools and specialty behind it, and you can make them really realistic with your facial animations, but, but you're doing realistic animations. Trying to re graduate it, re stylize. This is a little side.
side topic. As far as jobs, right? If you guys focus on, do you guys know what VFX is? Visual effects? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry. A VFX for video games specifically. So VFX for a video games specifically is like fire, explosions, trails, um, um, you know, that sort of thing. There, there's a there's a shortage of that position because everyone wants to be like an animator or everyone wants to make something, um, you know, a producer. Of, what's that? Like a producer, the, the guy who writes the story, or yeah, for producer, so, something that you know that's that you can kind of uh, sink your teeth into in terms of like, oh, that there's a person with a spotlight. That person's a, a director, or animator, or storyboarder, or or modeling. Uh, I model that. You know what I mean? But no. No one get the VFX guy doesn't get any spotlight saying that oh my god that person was the that made the lightning for that video game was that lightning for that movie it's just like the VFX person just kind of uh, is sort of like the kind of the bass guitarist I guess you know someone in the background uh, so that's also interesting like putting like a, a, you know, another new skill for yeah. them that's what I was gonna ask is it Houdini or is it like made it unreal <laughs> is it um, of both. If you're doing it for movies, people use Houdini. Mm -hmm. If you're using for uh, real time, you have a combination of using Photoshop, Maya, Unreal, uh, Unity. Yeah. If you develop your skill set, because those skill sets require the animation principles. Because there are people who are good with the technical, but they don't apply animation principles to the VFX, and it's kind of, it's kind of sick. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you learn motion graphics. And, and you understand the animation principles, if you apply that to VFX or you try to you can, you can put those two together, uh, our company, the company that I work for, they shoot for VFX art. Yeah, I think the thing is that uh, once you start um, expanding your, your discipline, you, you might want to really consider um, you know, studying VFX, why not? Because it's still part of animation. It's it's a it's a little technical once you kind of get deep into it. But anyways, I I want to kind of mention that because there's other roles out there, jobs out there. Sometimes you find yourself like, wait a minute, like people. I uh, I just wanted to guarantee that if anybody got a job across the street from where I live, I'll pretend like um, I didn't post anything about it and like you know I'm I have nothing to do with it. But there is a great new company called First Contact that creates games and they work very hard. I can see them out my window and they work every day and they're a big group of people and they're looking for a lot of things and the. Uh, it's posted on Discord, so uh, if you're confident, you could probably go there uh, and apply. Um, so, so Shana, your, your facial post is really, really good and really fun. Into is to the three dimensionality of your skin and when it becomes. Let's, you know, you want to ask yourself, how far does this um, eyebrows? the flesh come up, um, things like that. And you want to, you might need to start rotating and co compensating so that it does pop out the way you want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Depending on the reference, maybe maybe it's not anatomically correct to, to kick it out that much, but you want to get into that detail of the uh, three-dimensionality of, of, of the flesh and the, and the flesh right there. <clears throat> so, so again, just keep anatomy in mind. I like the the, uh, the way you sculpted the So which one? Which one was this? 
you, do you remember which one, or just? Uh, I would just say the fifth row, first. This one. The next one. This one. Yeah, it's not exactly the same, but, it, but still it has um, a bit of a connection there with the eyebrows. You just want to keep it pretty simple okay. and so fine. Next one, maybe. So they call like S shape, cutting piece, S shape, whatever. Yeah, you know, you're using your own video reference, but that's kind of the rule of thumb, right? Oh, yeah. You don't want to be completely disconnected. I'm not sure if that's even possible with your real shape. Oh. You know what I mean? That's just anatomically yeah. not possible. Um, and just keep in mind the um, kind of the seesaw squish. Like you can squish a ball like this, right? You can squish a face like, like this up and down. But you can also squish the face in a seesaw fashion. So in other words, if you want to exaggerate, if you want to exaggerate, um, so this is, This is face. And you can start opening up this um, this side a little more. So, in other words, the eyes are bigger. Maybe you might want to bring the smile out here a little bit more. So, you want to start looking at it as kind of a, a squishy object. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, stretch it. Elongated, and then uniformly you want to uh, squ uh, squash it on the other side. If you're going to stretch it on this side, you want to squ squash it on the other side as well. Um, These are, these are pretty hard to do, but um, but I like the fact that you made it uh, asymmetrical. You can already see a little bit of um, uh, a curve here, right? Yeah, I'm trying to make it really Yeah, th th this is good. This is good. Just keep in mind that there's, uh, always keep in mind the line of action, uh, which uh, shape you want your, your head to be, and which direction you want to craft it. Um, These are, these are all good. We don't have to go crazy detailed because we don't have uh, proper reference setups and we don't have a, a you know intent. Yeah. Um, well, unless, unless you want to share your thoughts behind this post. Well, what was the thought behind this one? This one is uh, timid but trying to uh, make fight against someone something. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, uh, No, that's, a, that's pretty complex. That's pretty complex uh, emotion. Timid, but still want to fight. Yeah, because he's trying to make pose to punch, but he cannot really punch yet. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. That's great. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the eyebrows a little disconnected. The mouth is uh, a little bit too symmetrical. Oh yeah. yeah. Depending on the camera angle, you could also um, <coughs> rotate your face, even though it's symmetrical oh, here. Okay. If your camera angle is like this, it's already you already got a freebie of uh, asymmetry, yeah. and you can do just the minor adjustments. So at, at this point, it's really um, for you guys keeping check with um, your own anatomy, uh, keeping check with discovering how far you can really push the uh, rig. Like, what is it really capable of? I know my face does this, but the rig can only achieve this, and uh, you'll have to settle with that uh, unless you know how to modify these things or you know you have a, a rigging friend that can work with you. Uh, so in a professional environment, if an animator is trying to uh, hit a certain pose, you can't do it. They'll, they'll talk to the that department and say, hey, I'm trying to do this. I can't do it. Can you help me? 
then the person was like, okay, I'll put that on my list, and that, that person will come back to you like a day or two later, and then you have that. So it's really, com it's not as easy as like 2D animation where, well, it's already, it's hard to, you know, draw all the stuff in 2D, but in 2D, you just draw what you want. But in 3D, you have to kind of technically develop what it's capable of, and it takes time. And some of these rigs are <coughs> um, definitely, obviously, have limitations. So, so based on sometimes with um, you know, uh, as far as uh, students like yourself, there's even though your reference says A, you might have to settle for a little less than A or alternative A because your rig cannot hit it. And and if you're trying to uh, do a performance and your in your choice is this, but the brick cannot go there. You might have to, uh, you know, go a little slightly different route to uh, to have a better feeling. <coughs> All right, so Ryan. So I have a PDF in the folder um, with the numbers, the corresponding frames and the poses that I was working on. All right. So this one, um, your lips don't match with your video reference from here. No, I know. I guess what I did, I mean, it was probably wrong, but I used the, the reference for the body, and then I tried to animate the face the way the, the drawing was. Uh, which drawing is this? Um, that is the second drawing, the top row. This one? Yeah. So, uh, can you tell me the, the difference between this and this? Uh, I mean, it seems like there's a big difference, but um, the... The main difference. I mean, the eyebrows are definitely more squashed. Um, it seems like his neck is more at an angle. Well, let's go with the first one, very on a simplistic level. So, so you know, we don't want to get too technical at this point. We just want to just... Um, I just want to just kind of drill into you animation principles over and over again. So you talk about squash, right? Right. So what part of the, you said the, the eyebrow is not squished enough. Well, what else is not squished enough? Um, I mean, I guess his eyes also. Um, yeah, his eyes also. And look at the, the lips how far your lips are compared to your nose mm -hmm. than the drawing. The drawing, okay. the lips are almost touching the nose. So mm -hmm. yeah, l little things like that. So so in other words, the lower half of the face is squashed, right? Okay. The jaws are kind of compressed in. Uh, let me see, let me see what controls, what controls that. Like this. So th this one does, this one doesn't uh, move that feel good. So essentially, I need to find a way to sculpt it all the way. Yeah, you, you want to um, pretty much mold it and sculpt it to the point where you're getting this type of compression, right? Mm -hmm. When you're getting this compression, then the cheeks come out, and you want to just um, pretty much sculpt it. Sculpt it to uh, this pose, your video, uh, your photo reference. The so main? So, so let's... Is the upper keep, lip pushing down. Super simple, 
with squash and stretch and, and anatomical shapes. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things when you were speaking about that I definitely didn't keep in mind was the, the way the, the skin wraps around the face. I guess I was working more in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's, that's totally fine. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you notice it right there, it's, kind of, it's pulling out versus wrapping around, so that's a little pinch there. Um, but yeah, not, you know, the more you do this, the more you start noticing what's, what's working and what's not working. Okay, let's go to the next one. And uh, I think that's the second row, the one on the far right. Second row on the far right. This one right here? Yeah. Okay. What? This is... Um, Again, his eyebrows probably should be raised higher. His eyes could be wider. Um, okay. Um, before we go too far up of that, let's look at line of action. Mm -hmm. It's um, definitely more... Uh, at this angle as opposed to mine where it's more like a C shape almost it looks like. Yeah, right? So this you, yours is almost like a reverse C shape and this one is almost like a line, right? Uh huh. So what you want to do is you want to sculpt your jaws so that it has that same line of action. So maybe you need to kind of push this out. Um, Rotate the chin. Maybe you need to rotate the chin. So just find whatever whatever it takes to kind of get this get get this shape. So so again, this is a drawing, so you can't hit it exactly. There's limitations, <clears throat> um, but you can get pretty close. You might have to push this. Might have to push this in a little bit, and might have to push this out a little bit. But, but that's the idea. You want to make sure your animation principle, line of action, um, is correct. Uh, don't settle for what the model has because you're going to limit yourself severely. You want to make sure that's the, the pose that you want. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't see anybody else's really other than Andre's and Sinead's, but I think Sinead had a really good... Um, uh, she was able to really get the folds around the, the cheek and the nose, which I wasn't really able to do. Yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of secondary controls. Like she's saying that it is uh, it's it's very difficult, you know, especially in the beginning. But once you get comfortable, it's like oh, that's this is the majority control. This is the sculpt. So you know, this one controls the majority of things, and this one is a minor controls, which it basically it's it's allowing you to do like a mini sculpting, so to speak. Uh -huh. So you can shape it the way you want, and um, and I think that's um, if you approach it as a, a sculpting or shaping, uh, shaping a drawing, you're creating a, a new drawing at this point mm -hmm. using these controls. I think you'll have a lot more fun with it. Um, so so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of you know uh, these minor controls, and you can really get a nice um, shape out of them. You just have to kind of. Uh, work with it. It's going to take take a bit of time, um, and with the face, I mean, I, I would really go with a, a layer uh, when you guys are getting comfortable because once you have a smile, it takes it's going to take you a while to create a smile, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then once you get that smile, it, it'll be good to put it inside a layer, and you can always. Um, um, you can always dial that in, dial that down, uh, based on the intensity. But that's something to think about as you're doing it, you know, later on. So, so yeah, so, so you have a bit of um, your your chin is closer to. Uh, it's the same note as before. Oh, what's going on? Here? <laughs> wow. Oh, something broke. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm just looking at your, your chin here, and I really like this, um, the 
expression. No, I'm looking for some asymmetry in the, the mouth. I think it's just it's your head tilt and your lips are a bit more compressed. Uh, even though and you, and it's, it's a little bit more of a wide frown, I think um, there's controls to, to work on that. Yeah, I would uh, bring uh, bring the mouth in to be a bit more of a, a close, closer mouth shape. Okay. Right now, it's a, it's a really wide uh, frown versus a, a tight kind of like really don't want to say anything. That that type of uh, uh -huh. mouth shape. So, so this one is cool. Uh, I like your eyebrows, I like your eyes, the mouth. Is you're you're pushing the boundaries of. Uh, uh, so was it this right here? Third one, third column, uh, right. Uh, second one. No, uh, up, up, up that one. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, you're pushing the boundaries of it. Uh, your flesh is probably sticking out a little too much. Um, so you want to keep the volume. You you know. You know the, the classic rule of uh, the stretching the ball, right? You can stretch the ball, but keep maintain the volume, right? right. So you want to try to maintain the volume, uh, keep choosing the anatomy. Like bringing the cheeks in? Yeah, bring the cheeks in and let's just, you know, you just have to look at your photograph to... Uh, the one you photographed, that one. Yeah, your, your mouth shape is uh, very, very different. But yeah, you want to push it to, uh, but you know, once you get to the cre creepy stage or, or anatomically incorrect, it's going to be, it's not going to look good. Uh, but maybe, maybe on a certain angle, it might look pretty good. Like, <laughs> that's acceptable. Right? <laughs> maybe if the lights are off. <laughs> <laughs> a bag over her head. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, if you, yeah, if you look at the uh, jaws are breaking at this point. But, um. But yeah, I mean, sometimes you can cheat it. If you're locked in a particular camera, you can kind of cheat it. <coughs> but uh, you want to just keep keep anatomy in mind as you're posing. That's uh, it looks that's like it. Thumb. I know. So I'm looking at how much, uh, how sunk it in. So this is a good exaggeration, but uh, again, let's let's take a look at how. I wish I could see a closer view of your of your eyes. I think I can do that one. Hilarious. So so is it this right here? This is the ref. Uh, yeah, but again, I was using the the drawing. Um, oh, I see. Um, it's. Uh, that column, but two down. This one? One more. This yeah. One? I see. The anguish, agony or something. I think the reason why his uh, eyes are sunken in is because his head is tilting down. So uh, that's something... I wonder how... If I, if I have to look at myself in the mirror, and you can probably do like a FaceTime, you can... Yeah, I don't think you can actually cover, my eyebrows can't cover all of that flesh. Mm -hmm. I don't have eyebrows. So you want to you wanna be sure you're not pushing it too far. Um, so where's your photo? So if you look at your photo here, um, you see that there's still that triangle bit of flesh there, right? Yeah. Yeah, you want to see if you can how far your face, you know, eyebrows can push it down. And I think what's happening here in this drawing is he's tilting his head down, so that way it's hiding the flesh. But uh, but I don't think the flesh is going down that much. So you just want to verify that. So this one looks a little bit off. Uh, so in the beginning, it's really just 
keeping anatomy in check, just like with the body animations, if you don't do um, the, if you don't do the proper anatomy check, it just things feel broken, feels a little off, just feels unnatural, and it's it's, it's the same thing. Uh, the shape, I mean, you can easily change the shape of the skull, and if you break it, he'll look like a complete different face. He'll, you know, you're not staying within his uh, to his model. You're you're changing basically his look. Um, and you don't want to do that, otherwise it's going to look like, wait a minute, that guy just uh, morphed into something else. So this is good, this is great. Let's look at your, so which one was this? It's uh, two over to the right. This one? Yeah. I see. Well, this is great. Um, the one thing that, so one way to look at the cheeks is, um, Kind of a catchy word uh, animators use. It's a fat pad. Like it's, it's, it's a fat. Mm -hmm. It's a pad of fat. So, um, so another animation principle, you could squeeze that cheek. The, the, the distance between the corner of the mouth and the uh, the eyes are quite far here. Yeah. So yeah, just adding a little more squash, a um, little more exaggeration on the mouth. And a little bit more, sh I mean, this guy has a very kind of a sharp chiseled chin, so it's going to be a little difficult, but you can see that his shape of his uh, <coughs> mouth is a bit more triangular. So um, it's a different different model, uh, but mo mostly the, the milk here is just um, getting it a bit more squashed on this side. And... And you're looking in two different directions. He's lo you're looking towards screen left, and he's looking screen right. Right. But um, yeah, I think it, it's a little counterintuitive here because it seems like his right eye is sort of leading the look. That means I would rather have the eyebrow up here, okay, and the other eyebrow down here, unless you did it differently here. Um, I mean, your eyebrows, because of, the, of your head tilt, um, I think neither, I think maybe the right, eye, right eyebrow is slightly higher, uh, but the shape of it is, uh, is different. So you have a, your eyebrows basically shape your eyes. Um, and in this case, you're using this reference. Yeah, I guess... Um, you know, you could be careful about mixing it too much. I mean, you know, body, yes, but if you're taking a 2D image right. and mixing it, so you're not, you're kind of fighting against your own um, anatomy. Um, but it's fun to play with. Uh, I think it's, I think it's fun. All right. So this is a good one, and this one is, yeah, that's a really good one. So uh, where, where's Okay, cool. So one thing is if you want to really kind of get into the whole line of action, his line of action, his chin is really far out, right? So you can really push that. You can really have fun with really kicking that out so that it's like a, almost like a slide. Um, and you can really jut the chin out. And you can really exaggerate the angle. Um, and, and this, he's a Disney animator slash character designer. He's so good at character design at the anatomical level that every animator at Disney who uses his drawings can feel the skeleton underneath. That's how good he is. He doesn't draw, just draw it because it just looks good. He draws it with um, the skeleton. Even though it's a cartoon, he has his cartoon skeleton underneath, and he'll push it, and he'll shape it <clears throat> to that, and it's, it's pretty, um, pretty crazy how 
how good he is with anatomy for a cartoon. So, of course, you don't have to go that far, uh, but keeping anatomy in mind, not breaking it, applying animation principles, sticking to your video reference, uh, animation principles again, exaggeration. I mean, you can, that simple thing called exaggeration, like this, what I'm doing, can take your animation from good to great, right? Really kind of pushing it more like this. And you can see the relationship between his neck, yeah. his shoulders, his shoulders. Your shoulders are kind of flat or kind of tilted this way. His shoulders are like leaning down. So you can really play with how far you can push it. But you know, you, you have a different uh, sort of um, direction you chose. Um, your, your choice is uh, shoulder up and I think this is I think this is great. I think your your reference is more exaggerated than oh yeah than your animation. So I mean, take take a look at this. The, the, his shoulders, your shoulders are all the way up here, so close to the um, his ears. So your shoulders are way up here. You know, I'm not going to be breaking this thing if I go too far. So it's like a nice and, nice and angle. Yeah. So you just want to like push it a little bit more, like little things like that. It just do, do more of what you know. Create that, create that line. Um, and it just feels that much more appealing. <coughs> um, no, this is this is a really good good reference. Um, this is a, it's a nice natural smile. Which one was this again? Sorry. Uh, this that one, one right here? I think I think you have two different directions here. This one is more like um, he's talking to his girlfriend. He's like, boom, like, you know, I, I told you so, you know, that type of thing, right? right. And this one is more like he's he's dreaming about dreaming about his future and is um yeah, it's kind of daydreaming, kind of off into the stars type thing. Okay. It's a little bit different direction of, of feel. All the bills paid. Good. Um, this one, this one's, this one changes the model a little bit. But uh, so, which one are you going for? This one is it? Is it this? Yeah. So this one's angry brows. You didn't do angry brows in this one. Um, Uh, the other way. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think you missed the whole angry, angry bit for your eyes. Um, and if it's this, your mouth is nicely asymmetrical, and you're, you got a kind of fat pad, or you're scrunched up here, stretched out here, and it's, it's not, um, um, yeah, you don't have, like, most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so basically this is a really good reference and you didn't apply any of this, transfer, you didn't transfer it over. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's really fun. You got really good stuff in there for the most part. Um, so do you have any questions overall with this exercise? Again, the goal of this exercise is for you to uh, know what to look for generally mm -hmm. as far as observation. Uh, observation of your... Uh, of your photographs and, and your controls and just kind of getting comfortable in, the, in this world. Um, after the break, we're going to come back and uh, go through everyone else, but uh, we'll look at some uh, video references of, of the, the human, human 
base and see see what you guys can 